Thank you for the torch. <laughs> All candles are out. Especially the watcher 
It's very malevolent, very unpleasant. Doesn't want us to be down here. So I think that we should probably move on. He's a cobbler making shoes. My favourite thing of his to do when we're down here is look at our shoes. See what types of footwear people are wearing these days. He likes a good solid pair of leather boots, such as you're wearing, but really can't understand this new fashion of trainers. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> He might be a bit disappointed tonight, but don't worry, he won't be angry, because he is just a very kind old man. And it's said that his presence here is acting almost as a positive force. It's keeping the Watcher out of this room. This room in May 1996. It was only two months after the vaults had been opened to the public. It was a busy summer's night. And three tours were due to come down in quick succession, one after the other. The first tour came down, and they didn't feel particularly scared. The vaults that night weren't all that atmospheric. However, all that seemed to change when they got to this room. The atmosphere turned sour, you'd say. And as they were thinking about this, they were restoring things like wine and things like that, just okay. for storage. Okay. Now, rest of the group back to the surface and come back down and try and catch this woman. He eventually caught her and calmed her down, and she told him her story. It appeared that as she was standing at the back of the group against the back wall, listening to the guy who's telling his tale, she began to hear, feel a breath on the back of her neck. Strange, as nobody was behind her. The breath moved round to the front of her face, it was a hot, whiskey-smelling breath. She thought how extremely unpleasant it was, but then began to hear a whisper, and the whisper said, Get out. Get out. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> Instead of coffins, they'd have simply buried in sack cloth, in cloth sacks. But also, in times of plague, not even the rich would be afforded a good burial. 
when plague came, they simply had to dig a large pit and put as many bodies in as possible. And another section of society which wasn't afforded a proper burial would be suicide victims. I'm afraid in the 17th and 18th centuries, suicide wasn't really understood as a tragedy that we think of it today. Instead, it was a crime. When a person committed suicide, their corpse would very often be put on trial after death, and possibly even hanged. And they wouldn't be allowed to be buried in proper graveyards. Instead, they'd be buried at crossroads, so their restless spirits wouldn't be able to find their way home. Which is why crossroads are often said to be...